the ability to be flexible, to be able to change. Um, the world changes, the economy is changing, companies change. Uh, what you're going to be asked for to do today may be totally different tomorrow. Um, in my roles, and Kevin and I were just talking, every two years I change roles. And I have yet to ask for <coughs> It's they pick you up and I need you to do this today. Uh, I need you to do this next week. Um, so having that flexibility, uh, knowing that it's going to change. Um, if you try to stay in the same job, doing the same thing day in, day out, the work's going to pass you by. So I, I think flexibility is, is, is absolutely critical. Um, and realizes it's not, it, whether it's manufacturing, um, whatever, uh, whether it's compressors, whether it's widgets, um, got to keep in mind that it's not just about the product, it's about the people. Um, so with your core workers, uh, your peers, your managers, or if you're in a supervisor or manager role, your, your uh, employees, um, those are your, your best skills. So um, having that ability to me is, is very, very strong. And then there's also the technical side, uh, being able to, to problem solve. Uh, there's always going to be problems on the shop floor, there's always going to be problems in the office. Being, having the ability to do problem solving is, is critical as well. And education, of course, is, is, is absolutely crucial. You know, whatever your education is, I'm not uh, currently in a job where I'm specifically using my education. Okay? I'm, I'm a nuclear physicist. It has nothing to do with uh, managing a, a manufacturing organization. But the thing that matters is what education brings to the table, what it gives you. Specifically, it's the critical thinking and the problem solving skills. And the, th the third thing, and it's probably in my mind one of the most important, is the ability to learn. You know, you're here to learn, but you're also here to learn how to learn. Because that's not trivial. And, and, and every day, be looking to learn something new. Every day, be willing to, to get pushed out of your comfort zone. And the people who do that are the ones who are <coughs> successful. It's a tenacity. When you get a problem that you can't solve, if you don't have the technical knowledge or whatever, don't give up. Because you have people that work for you that have that knowledge. And if you can ask the right questions, they can help you and themselves find a solution. Our office is big communication between our engineering department, you know, our specification department, the guys on the shop floor, and we just had a three-day training session on recognizing individual personalities and how to deal with each other's personalities. And so I think now that we recognize why a person is that way, or we know how to interact with that person, which which helps a lot. The profession are really interpersonal skills and communication skills. And in terms of schooling and how that might influence you, I would encourage you to take classes that would force you to give oral presentations, speech, or whatever it's called and technical writing, absolutely. You know, it, it's sort of a, a given that you're expected to have the technical understanding from the coursework that you take for the challenges you're gonna have in your jobs. And if you get a chance to use 10% of the actual coursework that you learn in a specific application or something, that's probably high. But what's gonna set you apart, I think, in your career long term is the ability to work with other people well and to be able to communicate effectively both written and oral. The one thing that kind of helped me was, I don't know, people, if you don't have a job now, is to try to get an internship in something that you like. So for me, that's where I started. Got it just to, you know, started as a three-week internship. Started where I worked there for a year and a half. Got, I learned, you know, probably more on the job doing AutoCAD than a few classes every, you know, a week or so. So just getting an internship in, in your field, that, all that helped me a lot. I learned so much during my internship. Try to do something different your second or your third internship. Even if you find out it's something you don't like, at least you know you don't like it. So when you go for a permanent job, it's, you have a, a little bit of diversity. So it's nice to see somebody that has maybe two internships or maybe even three that, that shows different aspects. But also from an individual standpoint, it'll help you decide, hey, I do like this or no, I'd rather not have this type of environment. Or, okay. One of the things I would say is, you're going, you're going to take a major. Don't get too locked in on, 
I want this job. We've heard how people have started off in different areas and kind of evolved into what they want to do. You're going to have the training and the background to where you know, you could flexibility. You can take a job, may not be perfect, but you want do it the best you can, get experience, and keep looking and working to develop yourself for what you do want to do. I, I would also say something that's crucial is learn how to play well together, all right? Literally, I mean, you probably do some projects where you can be together in a small group or some such. Learn how to work together seamlessly. Learn how to build the people up around you um, and, and have a good functional team. Well, those are the kind of skills that will serve you well you know, for your entire career. Myself, that's probably 80%. Only 20% do I go after the technical. Do, they, do you have the, the, the background as far as whether it's machining skills, the manufacturing skills, engineering skills? 80% is how do you fit in from a personal standpoint, the soft skills. Uh, because you may be the, the best technical person, but if you can't communicate that in the team that you're talking about, it, you're not going to be effective. So most of my, when I look on a resume, I look at the types of projects, the types of work experience, where it shows interaction. The type of leadership roles, if they've had type of leadership roles, uh, and then when it's face-to-face -face interviews, most of my questions are on the interpersonal sides, not on the technical side. And I would, I would say fit in, depends how you define fit in as well. Um, uh, there's, there's nothing I like better than seeing a resume and talking to someone and seeing that they're competent, that uh, they have good interpersonal skills, but they can be a fly in the ointment a little bit too. You know, I, I personally, I want employees that are going to ask questions that are going to examine the things we do and say, why do you do it that way? You know, fitting in doesn't mean being passive, you know, and just, just being part of the crowd. You know, it's somebody who's going to come in and be creative and, and yeah, be a little bit of a fly in the ointment, in, in my mind, is a, is a good thing. I know my second interview my current job with the president of the company, he didn't ask me one question that was on my resume. It was all personal questions, every, every question he asked. I think by by that time, most of the resumes have been screened, yeah. and they've already, that. they've already graded out. Yeah, he's got the he or she's got the technical skill or expertise. So when you get to the interview stage, you're into the point where employers are looking at you, going, "Okay, how does this person fit in?" Yeah. They obviously have the technical qualifications, but how would they work in the organization? Again, the, the technical background and. Uh, the ability to do the job from a technical standpoint, I think, is typically a given if you get to a point where you have an interview. Certainly, in an interviewing or a hiring process, I like to look at it as an opportunity for the individual to learn about the company and for the company to learn about the individual and see if there's a cultural fit between the two. Now, I'm not necessarily looking to hire a person who's going to be here for one year or three years and use it as a stepping stone to move someplace else, although that happens. You know, the ideal hire for me is for somebody to to come on and it fits so well that the person wants to retire there. Uh, so it, it's certainly important that, that they have the technical expertise and the experience if that's part of what you're looking for for the position. But I agree with everybody said here that cultural fit, the ability to communicate, and, uh, and, and so on. 